Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. Today it is Library Day, and we're going to talk about Harrisonburg, the fundraiser for the, the quote, fundraiser quote for the Virginia Quilt Museum, because I have a surprise for you. I don't know if I can stand all these surprises, one right after the other, but this might be the end of the big surprises that I know about right now. <laughs> but we are going to do the library quilt first. So here it is. Here's my version from the Holiday Hoopla book. Let me just pull this in here. So this is what's in the book, and I've done the first row with a whole different set of fabrics. I'm using a layer cake plus some other things and, and putting uh, selvages on uh, some of the books, like some here for like the words, um, using my Promise Me gray background. And so this has been, this is so fun. We're going to look at this fabric again because today... I am going to give you a bonus pattern because I want to show you how to put a block on top of the books. Instead of the books, you can do a six inch block. Now I'm not giving you a six inch block because there's tons of them out there on the internet. You can find one. I'll show you some and I'll show you the one that I'm going to do. Um, but that is, that is where it's going to go. Plus I will give you the whole block directions so that, um, yeah, so that you can do that. And I adjusted, I adjusted it. I'm going to show you that. I adjusted this one just a little bit rather than having two books straight across. I had it bumped in just a little bit and then a block on top. Okay, so I'm next week, next week I'm going to give you a bonus of a vase. I'm going to draw a vase and applique, it'll be applique. So you applique lovers, you will love that. I'll do a vase with a flower in it. So if you want something like that for this space, you can do that. Then I'm trying to think about what to do down here on the last one, because what I think I'll do is remove this book, maybe even two, probably not two books, just probably one book and then do something in that space. So if you have suggestions for that space, which is skinny, it's a skinny space, but I'll do some sort of applique for down there. But this week, we're going to do this piece block here. So we're going to go to the other side and walk through how that works. So I brought this row over here for us to look at. And what we're going to do is use this block to put the six inch up here. And then I've adjusted this book a little bit for the pattern. And so that's a free download today that you can do on my website, it's a bonus. So you use any six inch block, I'm not giving you that. This is the entire sheet you're downloading. Then we have two books on the bottom and then I give you all the measurements that go around in order to make the size block that goes there. And you could replace all three of those or replace two of them and you know not the third one within the quilt. So however you wanna mix it up. So I am going to use the globe because I decided that would be, that, that's what I want to do for this one. I just feel like this quilt, that's the, the globe feels good. So it is from the Spelling Bee book. All the blocks in here are done in six and, what's the other one? I didn't care about it. Six and 12. <laughs> I didn't care what the other size was. I just needed six. So six and 12 inch blocks. Uh, the globe has, a, whoop, there it is. There's three variations. There's the full one like this. And then there is a patchwork version, which has little squares on it instead, like this. And then there's a really pretty version with a heart. And I was debating, 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 do I do the one with the heart? So there's the heart, which is so pretty. But I've decided to go in the full globe because of the fabric I'm going to use. So I decided to look around and I have a map fabric. This is from the Paris Flea Market. If you have been quilting a while, you might remember the Paris Flea Market line. They actually came out with it. They republished it a second time years later, which now still was a long time ago. <laughs> but I think this is gonna make a perfect globe. Plus the fabrics work, this fabric works really well with this fabric line called Blooms and Happiness. And I link you at my website and in the description box here to um, you know, the fabric and all, not this, you can't get this one. Now the globe itself has a base and then a, uh, like a little stem or whatever you wanna call it. So let me just show you this a second here let me let me just do this hold on okay let's come down here a minute so whoops okay so i've got 
my books is wood. Here we go. The book set up. So I've got it set up in in working position. So the bottom book. This is from my birdsong fabric, and then this is from the um, blooming happiness or happiness blooming, whichever way it is. And then I tried two different sort of title things, and I like the light there, but not this light. It's got those little. I don't know why. I, maybe you love it, but I just don't love it. I'm going to wait and see. I'm going to keep that square and see if it works for a book in the third row. Uh, otherwise, so I'm going to go with the black unless I think of something better uh, before I sew it up. Then here is the structure around the globe block. We'll go in the middle. These are some pieces already cut for the globe. So you can see this will be your six inch block and you can use whatever six inch block you have, you like. It could just be a patchwork block. It could be one of those image type blocks. And now for the globe, I need, let's see, I'm going to show you here. For the globe, you need this, you know, base. And so let me just pull in a little bit here. So for the base, I am going to use this green from the line. But I didn't, I didn't want to use, I thought at first, I was like, oh, okay, I'll use it here and here. But I thought, nah, that just doesn't seem very good. So in the line, there is this uh, beige right here. The problem is, it looks almost like the map fabric. It is so similar. So I decided to just go hunt through my stash and I found this. This is gorgeous. So this works so well. It gives, it'll give the little definition of the pedestal in the top part of the globe and then the map will be the globe. And then I will hand embroider the um, you know hoop that you can have to move the globe, I guess. You can just leave that off. I think that it reads as a globe without that, uh, but you know, if you don't want to hand embroider. But this is what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna fussy cut to get the Eiffel Tower. Where is it? I just spotted it. Come on, baby, where are you? I just saw you, where are you? Was it on the other side? Where's the, there's the Arc de Triomphe, oh, here it is. Here's the Eiffel Tower. So I'm going to fussy cut mine to have the Eiffel Tower on there. Okay, so I will do that, and then we'll see, then I'll sew the whole block up, and then I'll show it to you. I pinned my row up here so that I can put the globe and books block. There it is. This is so exciting. Now, I am going to go ahead and stitch the little, you know, wire part for the globe right here. But let me put it up on the quilt so you can see how it looks. Ah. I love it, love it, love it, love it. It's so fun to do this with other fabrics because you know how rare it is that I can make a quilt again of mine. I do like Oh My Stars. I do that one. I've done several of those, but there we go. So the books, this is block one, two. Now this is not going on the top row. It will go down on this row here. And uh, remember I said next week, I'll give you an applique vase to put right here. And then we'll have, then we'll work on the third, third row after that. Oh, so fun. That is so fun. It does actually look good up there. It does look good up there. I don't know. I may, I may just take this block here and put it down for my second row. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. Tell me in the comments if you think it looks really good on that top row. You know why I think it looks good is because this is shorter here versus sh then shorter on the outside. I sort of like that it it comes you know up and I don't know. I'm loving it there. That would be that there would really be nothing on that row. Um, so there would be like a vase here and the globe and then nothing here unless I left a book out here and a book out there if I wanted to put more things into it. And then I would still, this is only going to be what about, it's not six inches by any means. It's only be like four inches or something like that. And same down there. I could make that one bigger if I wanted. <clears throat> you can also do things like you could shift this whole bookcase over and touch, and then you can make more room on that side. That's another thing that you can do. So you can just shift this around, uh, you know, and make it how you want to have it. Okay, so now let's go to Harrisonburg, but you got to give me a minute. So let me just swap some things out and I'll be back. 
First, my Harrison Burke, which has all of the border done. Now I am going to put that, uh, I'm going to put like a little one and a half inch strip like I showed you yesterday around the whole outside of this quilt before it goes to be long armed. Uh, yeah, oh, so exciting, so exciting. I wanna thank Bobby, our ambassador for helping me piece, piece the blocks. Oh, it all turned out so, so good. Uh, I want to remind you that Wendy Shepard, who uh, is my partner in crime for this, she and I will be at the Virginia Quilt Museum in September. I believe it's the 16th, which is a Saturday. We'll be there the whole afternoon. You just need to register. Then you can come and visit with us. You can see the quilts in person and, um, you know, see the museum, of course. Okay. Now here's the surprise. Wendy's quilt is here and it's quilted. It's all done. Unlike mine, which is still a top. <laughs> Wendy is amazing. She's been showing you, if you've been following her Instagram, she's been showing you pictures of her blocks for months. She just works very, she and I work very differently that way, but she does amazing work. And I must show you, I have not pulled it out yet. I have not. I have just peeked. And I wanna show you when I peeked, the first block that I saw in the box, look at, oh my gosh, this thing's squeaky. The first block that I'm seeing in here has the squirrel and the mushroom. Do you see? Okay, I gotta pull it out of the plastic. Pull it out, oh my goodness, this is so exciting. I just can't hardly stand it. Okay, there we go. See, this is the first thing I saw when I opened it. <gasps> look how cute that is, and she's got all these different fabrics. Okay, I am gonna hang it up here and we're gonna take a close up look. And there it is, out of the box. Oh, Wendy's quilt from the Harrisburg. Isn't that amazing? Oh my goodness. I am gonna walk you through with the other camera. We're gonna just look at the fabrics that she used because she isn't using just one type of blue which and nor one type of light. The, the And so that is what makes her quilt really, really spectacular. And you'll also note that she did a wider um, cream border all the way around. I was thinking of mine to be more narrow, like the one and a half, which I will still do. That way, when you see them next to each other, when you come to the event, uh, you will just um, be able to tell, you know, to see the differences. I think that's really fun. But look at that. Okay, we're gonna go in close. Doing a quilt like this is all about the fabric. Wendy said she's been collecting shades of blue for many, many years and that she had such a fantastic time playing with them and working with them. So let's just pick, I'm just gonna pick one block and I'm gonna show you a little bit about how she did things. We'll just come right in here so I don't have to crouch or anything. Uh, so she has got, look at the watering cans. Oh my gosh, I've never seen that piece of fabric. Wendy, where'd you get that? She's probably had it for years, uh, but each fabric is different. Every single piece. Now she has, um, and for the block, now she might have repeats of some of them within the quilt. I don't know. I'll have to ask her. I've forgotten what she said, um, but she knows how many of everything there is because she likes to count that stuff. And so this is what it looks like when you do all the fabrics different. Now let's come over and look at my blocks where they're not like that. We'll do this where you can really see. I use the same blue here and then the same teal on all four and then a different one in the middle. My background is all the same fabric and it is a different look, but this is all oh, so fantastic. Look at the peacock, look at the peacock. Oh my goodness. And then out on her outer squares, each one is, you know, different fabrics, all four that go around the center square. All the squares are different. And she's got light and dark. So some blocks are fairly dark, like this one. Let's pull back. So some blocks are fairly dark. And then you can see right below, a lot of light, a few pops of dark. Do you see that? And then here's one, fairly light again, a few pops of dark. And so that is, you know, doesn't have to be that way. I mean, you could be a little bit more controlled if you like them all dark, all dark blues. But the beauty of this quilt is all the fun stuff. This is like a quilter's eye spy. Look at the cat fabric. 
look at this oh my goodness and now look at the shade of this this is kind of a tan or a darker taupe now it does like read this has a very similar feel but then this is a different cream altogether um, she doesn't appear to be using any white whites so you can see it against mine do you see the difference they're all leaning to the cream and this is this is white white my uh, promise me fabric so here's some other blocks she's got gorgeous florals look at the fish look at the fish in there oh so cute there's snowmen look at the snowmen oh my gosh oh my gosh and then I can't go any closer because I will step on the quilt I don't have I can't make my that my rack go up any taller today is being cranky this is as tall as it'll go so we've got there's actually a block over there that says hope you see it in there you probably can't hear me now I had to reach my arm all the way over there there was one with a little bitty shirt on it but oh my gosh look at the mushrooms look at those mushrooms oh my goodness Wendy those are so cute there's some flags American flags oops sorry there we go and there was there's the mushrooms with the squirrels in blue she also had that with white background that's what I showed you so there's some variations there's some more kitties a different kitty fabric look at that what is this this looks like eyeballs in there or something just just so cool just so cool I love every little stinking piece of this okay where is her initial does she do it on the right it's somewhere on here here we go here we go the initial just like the original has below a teacup Wendy collects teacups Whew. okay enough leaning down folks there we go let me just pull back you def definitely definitely have to come see our quilts in person this is this is a masterpiece Wendy thank you so much for lending it to me so I could show everybody up close okay okay back to the other camera was this exciting or what no it's exciting it's so exciting I think Wendy's gonna let me have this quote uh, on loan for a little bit uh, remember you can enter now this is down below and at my website today you can enter your quilt your Harrison Burke quilt in the virtual quilt show you can sign up to come to the event in Harrisonburg Virginia at the museum with Wendy and I September 16th which is a Saturday afternoon we will be there all afternoon uh, and if you have a totally finished quilt we will be having a real uh, exhibit a live exhibit with our quilts the antique quilt and uh, some of your quilts only a handful maybe a dozen just depends on how many get entered but you can enter for yours to be exhibited in the museum along with ours and the original all right so okay so if you didn't download you can download um, the uh, Eleanor I'm well, sorry the Ellen um, Ellen Rebecca Spitzer Harrisonburg quilt from the Virginia Quilt Museum website and it is a fundraiser for the Virginia Quilt Museum we've raised over twenty three thousand dollars for the museum so far that is fantastic you are amazing quilters supporting quilting education uh, for everybody having this quilt museum okay also if you want to do a uh, some sort of six inch block to add to your library quilt I have a bonus pattern that you can download my block is from the spelling bee book I did the globe so excited so excited okay I love you Mwah. thank you for being here in the Sloan zone I will see you online